Now that you have your software installed and authorized, let's get a basic stream up and running with our first application, NiceCast. NiceCast is an amazingly easy to use internet radio broadcaster and stream server all built into one. It has a very comprehensive and easy to understand manual and excellent customer service. If you have questions about NiceCast or run into problems, always try the manual first. It will solve the vast majority of your setup and user problems. Remember, part of the purpose of our student streams is to encourage entrepreneurship in our students. The ability to find the help you need and fix problems for yourself is a fundamental part of being an entrepreneur. Your student stream is a great place to develop those personal skills. Let's open NiceCast. You'll be presented with NiceCast's main broadcast window. From here, you can set up and control your stream. Click the Info button to open the Info drawer below the broadcast window. Here you can enter a name for your stream and any other information you'd like your listeners to see while listening. Next, click the Source button. This is where we'll tell NiceCast where to get the audio we'd like to stream. Click the drop-down menu under Source to see a list of all of the possible sources we can choose. You could choose to stream your computer's system audio, or audio from the device of your choice, or audio from an application, like iTunes, QuickTime, Megaseg, or any other application that has an audio output. We'll choose the application iTunes as our audio source for now. iTunes will work as a very basic automation system and audio library for our NiceCast stream. Click Start Broadcast to begin streaming. NiceCast will open iTunes for you if it's not open already and capture its audio output. By the way, if iTunes was already open, you may have to allow NiceCast to shut iTunes down and reopen it again to capture its audio output. Now, any audio that you play from iTunes will be streamed through NiceCast's built-in server on your computer to your local network and through your router to the internet. You're now up and streaming. Well, technically you're not really streaming until somebody connects to your stream. To connect to your stream, listeners will need a URL to point their MP3 player to. You'll find the URL for your stream in the Share drawer. Click the Share button and you'll see two URLs. The first one is your streaming computer's internet address. This is the URL listeners will use to reach your computer and its audio stream. The second one is your computer's local address. This address can be used to test your stream without having to go through your router or the internet. We can use the local address to listen to your stream from any computer on your local wireless or wired network, including the streaming computer itself. Let's try that first. First, select and copy the local address. That's the second address in the share drawer. Be sure to include the .m3u extension. By the way, the copy button in the source drawer copies the internet address, not the local address, so don't use that button right now. Once the local address is copied, make sure your stream is still playing, and then open QuickTime Player. Click on the File drop-down menu, and select Open Location. On older versions of QuickTime, it's called Open URL. Paste the local address into the Movie Location field, and click Open. You should now be able to hear your stream through the QuickTime Player. This will work from any computer connected to your local network. If QuickTime isn't playing your stream, first make sure iTunes and NiceCast are still streaming audio, then double check that you've pasted the exact, complete local address into QuickTime. If it's still not working, you probably have a firewall on your streaming computer blocking access to the stream. If you're comfortable changing firewall settings, the Megaseg help files will show you how to modify your firewall, opening up the port that's being blocked. Be careful though, modifying your firewall improperly can make your computer more vulnerable to cyber attacks. Now let's try connecting through your internet URL, the way your listeners will. First, we'll test our connection to the internet with NiceCast's built-in server checker. Click the Check Now button at the bottom of the share drawer. This will automatically send your internet address to a remote NiceCast server that will try to connect to your stream. It will then send back a message letting you know if you're properly connected to the internet. If you are, you can now go to any computer with internet access and connect to your stream using QuickTime or any other stream player.
and the internet URL from the share drawer in NiceCast. The NiceCast manual describes a few different ways to get your stream's URL out there. You can save your URL as a .m3u file that can be sent to potential listeners. When they double-click the file, their audio stream player will connect to your stream through the Internet. Or you can create a link for your stream's website. These and other methods are all in the manual. If the NiceCast server checker returns an error, don't get too discouraged. It's intentionally made more difficult to reach your computer from the Internet than from a local computer for security reasons. If you're comfortable changing your router settings and its firewall settings, the NiceCast manual can help. If you're not, don't worry. We'll soon be connecting NiceCast to the servers at Live 365, so you won't have to worry about server security or router settings for your stream. Let's take a look at some of the other settings in NiceCast. If you click on the Quality button, you'll see a few settings for the quality of the stream you're creating. For now, let's make the bitrate 128 kilobits per second, the sampling rate 44.1 kilohertz, and set channels to stereo. The manual has a great description of trade-offs between higher settings, sound quality, and the number of listeners that can listen at the same time. Feel free to change the settings around and listen to the difference it makes to the sound of your stream. Just remember to reset it to 128 kilobits, 44.1 kilohertz, and stereo when you're done experimenting. Next, let's click on the Titles button to open the Titles drawer. Here you can decide what information you'd like to send with your stream. You should check all three checkboxes. This will cause NiceCast to send all of the required information needed for licensing purposes when we connect to Live 365 assuming your music has its metadata set up properly. We'll talk more about that in later tutorials. Finally, let's click on the Effects button. This will open up a window that will allow you to add many different effects and other NiceCast modules to your stream. If there are any effects already in the Effects window, click the drop-down menu in their upper right-hand corner and select None to remove them. To add an effect, click on one of the effect slots and choose the effect you want. We'll be adding a voiceover effect module that will allow us to use a mic and add our voice to the stream. Make sure all the slots are empty, then right click an effect slot and choose the 4FX effect called voiceover. If the VoiceOver Effects editor window isn't open, click the Editor button on the VoiceOver Effect to open it. Look in the Editor window for the effect to choose the microphone you'll be using and the audio source if you're using an audio interface. You can use Crossfade to control the mix of voice to music, then change the Auto Ducking setting to control how much the music level is lowered under the voice. You may have to go back and forth between these two settings to get it just right. Now, if you press Start, the music will become a bit quieter and the mic will become live so you can talk over your audio playback. Hit Stop to turn the mic off. Again, everything you need to know about the voiceover effect, the effects window, and how to use the effects is all in the NiceCast manual. We'll get back to NiceCast in our future tutorials, but for now, spend some time playing around with and getting used to your new NiceCast audio stream. In our next tutorial, we'll upgrade from iTunes to Megaseg, a much more powerful radio automation system.